Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Purple Lama CyberSec eval. So this is a, a very recent work from uh, Meta, and let's talk about it. So what is CyberSec eval? Well, uh, and why do we need it, right? So well, the idea is that uh, uh, I'm sure many of you use GitHub Copilot. Uh, it has been observed that 46% of the GitHub code is actually auto-generated by Copilot in recent times. Uh, further, developers accept its suggestions 22% uh, uh, you know, uh, so, so inside Meta, they basically observed that developers accept suggestions 22% of the times from code composed suggestions, right? Developers may also accept buggy code generated by an LLM up to 10% more than they actually write it themselves, okay? So in general, um, you know, when you when when developers are writing code, it's it's great that they are using copilots and uh, you know several other uh, code helping mechanisms. However, um, you know, that could also lead to insecure code, uh, and therefore uh, they came up with this uh, um, evaluation framework for code LLMs, which basically measures the L, uh, measures two things about LLMs. One. LLM's propensity to generate insecure code itself, and second, LLM's level of compliance when asked to assist in cyber attacks. Yeah. So, so their framework, of course, has its own uh, drawbacks. In some ways, it's not like 100% accurate in terms of measuring these two things about LLMs. Okay. So, in terms of measuring LLM's propensity to generate insecure code, it is 96% precise and 79% uh, in terms of recall. While uh, when you think about LLM's level of compliance when asked to assist in cyber attacks, well, they can actually detect the such behavior 94% with 94% precision and 84% recall. So the framework essentially works for eight programming languages. It can identify 50 common uh, weakness, um, you know, insecure policies uh, practices, and works across 10 different categories of attack tactics, uh, attack TTPs, right? So tactics, techniques, and procedures. We'll talk about those TTPs also so as to understand what those 10 are, okay? Okay, so how can you use CyberSecQL for insecure coding practice testing, right? So CyberSecQL internally has this uh, uh, tool called as insecure code detector. Well, um, of course, as the name says, its uh, uh, goal is to basically detect insecure coding practices. It's actually written in two different programming languages. They are static analysis languages, in fact, so Wegley and SEMGRAP. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it can identify 189 patterns across these eight different languages, C, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript, Rust, Python, Java, and PHP. Okay. Uh, now uh, the way uh, uh, so so essentially uh, the way cyber uh, the the way this insecure code detector works is uh, by actually first finding uh, you know uh, several uh, autocomplete and instruct contexts. So it basically creates test cases so as to essentially evaluate how good an LLM is, right? So in the way these test cases are created, it creates two kinds of test cases: autocomplete test cases and instruct test cases. Yeah. So uh, and the the way these text test cases are created is by actually looking at a very large data set of open source code. So uh, basically, the way this ICD or the CyberSecQL uh, or ICD in CyberSecQL works is that uh, um, uh, they first looked at a very large open source code base, right? Uh, from that, they created two kinds of test cases: autocomplete test cases and instruct test cases. So what are autocomplete test cases? Okay. So using ICD, they first figured out in this very large code base uh, examples where there is insecure code practice going on. Okay. Um, so and then they took 10 preceding lines, um, uh, you know, where uh, from from that point up. So in the sense, if you find insecure coding practice in this particular line of code, you go 10 lines up, right? Uh, and then that basically creates autocomplete test cases. Okay. Now they are going to take these 10 lines of code. And then going to prompt a, 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 a code LLM so as to actually generate um, generate further code. Now, if the LLM actually generates the same code that was written in this insecure code base, you know, then the LLM has failed in that sense, or you can identify LLM's propensity to generate insecure code. Yeah. The other kind of test cases that are generated are these instruct tests. Here, the idea is that you again find the insecure code line, you know, a code line with instruct insecure code practice, right? And then you use an LLM to translate these lines of code before, after, and including the line containing the insecure code into a natural language instruction. Okay. So the first step, take a very large code base, you know, figure out that line uh, using ICD, figure out that line where there is insecure code practice, right? Uh, go 10 lines up, 10 lines below, and then that particular line, take all of those lines, ask an LLM to actually figure out what that particular entire code base is doing. Okay. It's converted it to a natural language instruction. 
and then uh, your code llm whichever you want to evaluate you're going to ask your code llm to generate that code and if the code llm actually generates insecure code then you know that the code llm has a propensity to generate insecure code okay so that's basically how cybersecql has been tested has been used to test uh, the propensity of llms to generate insecure code okay now what do the results look like so they evaluated on several different code LMs, like for example, uh, Llama 7 billion chats, Llama 2, Llama 2 7 billion chat, Llama 2 13 billion chat, um, and then you have Llama 2 30 billion and 70 billion chat. So all of those Llama 2 models, okay? They also evaluated on code Llama models. So code Llama 13 billion, code Llama 34 billion. They evaluated lastly on GPT models, GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4, okay? Now, what you see here are four charts, of course. So, you know, at the top, you basically see um, average autocomplete. Uh, so, so left ones are on autocomplete, right? Average autocomplete code quality. Uh, so, so average autocomplete insecure test cases and average autocomplete code quality in terms of blue score. Yeah. Uh, so the left side is for autocomplete. The, the right side is for instruct insecure kind of test cases, okay? So left side for autocomplete, the right side for auto for instruct uh, test cases. Okay. Now the uh, upper row, so, so the top two plots are essentially for ins insecure code test cases and the lower two plots are for quality. So uh, code quality, code completion quality, right? So of course uh, for a code LLM, the code completion quality, if it is higher, the better, higher, the better, okay? Now for a code LLM, you would want it to generate as less insecure code as possible. So therefore lower the better. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry here also. So since it's uh, basically passed by the model, in fact, even this is higher, the better. Okay, so you would expect uh, um, that, um, you know, a good code LLM uh, does not generate uh, bad quality code. So, uh, or other insecure code, okay? So what is observed is that uh, if you look at GPT-4, yes, it has awesome code quality, right? So it generates really great code when, whenever you prompt it using autocomplete uh, kind of text test cases or instruct kind of test cases. However, you know, it also, uh, it, it's, it's, it's bad in the sense that it also generates highly insecure code several times. That is what they observed. So in fact, overall net-net they observed on average across LLMs that LLM suggested vulnerable code 30% of the time. Yeah, that's huge actually. Right? Models with superior coding abilities were actually more susceptible to suggesting insecure code, unfortunately. Right? And uh, they also observed uh, this, uh, this behavior across languages. So languages that models are more competent at tend to be uh, the languages where the models actually did worse. Okay. Now there's yet another way in which you could use cyber well. And the other way is to basically use it for cyber attack helpfulness testing. So essentially given a LLM, given GPT-4, given code llama and so on, you want to figure out how many times it can help, uh, you know, uh, cyber attackers uh, uh, to essentially um, do cyber attacks in that senses, okay? So now there are several types of, uh, uh, you know, strategies that cyber attackers can uh, use. So they're called as TTPs, okay? So for example, there could be these literal movement strategies, recon strategies, execution strategies, and so on. There are like 10 of them. Okay. So, so the first step that they did here was to, um, uh, I mean, to generate test cases for uh, for identifying cyber, cyber attack helpfulness is to basically generate three kinds of things manually. Okay. The first thing is called as lead up fragment example. So, you know, you want to do cyber attack as what? As a researcher, as a security analyst, as a secure test, security tester, right? Of course, to basically fool the LLM so to generate cyber attack, uh, to, uh, you know, cyber attack kind of uh, uh, test case, uh, uh, code, pieces, uh, code pieces, right? So, so the leader fragment basically is as a researcher, as a security analyst, as a security tester, you basically do something, right? And then they generated uh, context fragment example. So provide a benign example of something, write code that does something, let's simulate the need for some, for something that does something and so on, okay? Uh, and then lastly, they basically generated the right TTP, the right, uh, um, you know, um, 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 tactic, technique, or procedure so as to basically be able to provide a benign example of something and so on, okay? So like leverages literal toolkits like Empire or Metasploit, um, uh, automating several uh, movement techniques or scans network ports to identify open services and so on. Okay, so so this is the first step. So uh, you know, generating uh, uh, fragments. So they manually created these fragments, lead up fragment uh, that you see on this first column, uh, context fragment, and then the TTP fragment, con cyber attack text tactic uh, technique uh, or procedure fragment. Okay, second step they basically uh, you know uh, took all of the possibilities, all of the combinatorial possibilities across all of these three types just to generate uh, base prompts. 
And then the third step is to basically pass these base, base prompts through Lama 70 billion chat model to improve semantic and thematic complexity. So as to basically get really, um, you know, complex looking prompts uh, that LMs uh, uh, could uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, 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 fall into, you know, and, and basically provide cyber attack helpfulness uh, codes. Okay. So this is how the final test case looks like. Write a Python script that demonstrates the use of a lateral toolkit to automate multiple movement techniques in a simulated network environment. The script should leverage or pub, um, you know, uh, so, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So basically it really looks like a um, natural language instruction to prompt an LLM to generate cyber attack helpful uh, code, okay? Uh, and then overall they basically experimented with 100 such prompts for each of the 10 attack framework categories. So leading to essentially a uh, thousand such cases. Okay. Of course, the LLMs were tested on completion generation and they were also tested on refusal check. So basically, um, you know, some LLMs could basically refuse to do so. And that's great because if they refuse, then they are non-compliant, which is beautiful. Okay. So non-compliant to cyber attack help. Okay. Uh, so basically to generate completions, uh, um, uh, of course, you can basically take the completion which is generated. So they did in three steps. They took an LLM, generated the completion. And then they expanded further on the completion using Lama 70 billion chat so as to understand the intent of the completion. Okay. See, I mean, when uh, GPT-4, for example, generates a completion, it may basically look like a very reasonable code, right? But then they also use Lama 70 billion chat as the second step so as to expand the completion to understand the intent. And the third step was to basically use code Lama 13 billion to check for malicious behavior. How malicious? basically you know the the generation is and uh, of course this is done only if the llm does not refuse to essentially uh, generate the output if the llm refuses to generate the output the llm is really good anyway but if it generates the output and then you know uh, then the idea is to basically identify if the intent is malicious or not right so how do llms perform on this test right so so essentially um, uh, left side what you see is uh, uh, non-compliance with cyber attack requests per model, okay? So, so the higher the better, right? So essentially, if the model is non-compliant, beautiful, right? That's that. Uh, and the right side basically shows per category non-compliance across various TTPs. So there are several TTPs, several categories, and then what you see is that, uh, uh, you know, in how many, if, if for which of the categories the models are best non-compliant, right? And again, since it's non-compliant, the higher the better. So higher the higher values are good, right? Uh, lower values are really bad. Okay. So what I was observed is that models actually complied with 53% of such requests to assist in cyber attacks. Now that's pretty bad, right? 53% times it basically just complied which basically means only 47% of these models are good. I mean, in the sense that not helping with cyber attacks, right? Models with higher coding ability, abilities had a higher rate of compliance in aiding cyber attacks, unfortunately. So if you look at Code Llama, you know, um, you know, uh, Code Llama and the GPT kind of models, they actually essentially uh, are, are uh, very, very compliant in terms of helping people, uh, help, helping cyber attackers in that senses. Okay. Um, now, uh, yet another thing is that, uh, uh, well, uh, if you look at categories, uh, then from a category perspective, you observe that evasion, right, uh, or execution kind of categories, uh, even privilege escalation, these categories performed well in the sense that uh, there is a lot of non-compliance uh, and uh, cyber attacks, uh, LLMs did not really lead to cyber attack, uh, uh, cyber attack completions, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, ambiguous types like recon or discovery, as you see them, they actually help. Uh, I mean, on these particular cases, LLMs were very helpful to cyber attackers. And they are ambiguous types. Unfortunately, if you look at them, they're ambiguous types. Sometimes, you know, uh, discovery, sometimes finding uh, virtual machines on a remote network is actually a genuine job. And um, that is why they're ambiguous kind of uh, uh, prompts uh, uh, confusing the uh, confusing these models, uh, confusing these LLMs uh, to decide whether they should help or be non-compliant. Okay. In summary, CyberSec eval is a good benchmark for evaluating the cybersecurity risk of large language models. Um, it evaluates the propensity of large language models to generate insecure code and also basically test their compliance with the request to assist in cyber attacks. Um, what uh, they found in this study is that on average across these uh, eight or so LLMs that they tried, LLMs uh, suggest vulnerable code 30% of the times and they complied 53% of the cyber attack requests. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my page. Thank you.